Hi! In this video presentation I will talk about the gas emission from the soil in the island of Vulcano. The process of the soil degassing is well known in volcanic zones. The study of the volcanic gases emitted by diffuse degassing can help for volcano monitoring. The diffuse degassing is a risky volcanic process that needs to be managed by civil protection agencies based on reliable data, continuous updating. My name is Roberto and I am researcher at the INGV in Palermo. This is the outline of this video presentation. In the first point, I will discuss about the motivation to study the gas hazard at Vulcano. The case study of Vulcano can be a suitable test site to develop a reliable uh, gas hazard warning system that can be applied also in other zones. The central part of the presentation will focus on the tool used for study the gas hazard at Vulcano, the on-site table uh, carbon isotope determinations calculated with the CO2 flux and the CO2 concentration allow evaluating the gas output from volcanic origin. Some theoretical principles and the technical details of the gas hazard warning system at Vulcano will be discussed in the last point. After that, I will give you an invitation and list the main points of my work. Volcanic gas emissions have sometimes been the cause of fatal accidents. Current estimates show that more than 2,000 people death since 1900 due to volcanic gas emission. The most dangerous events occurred at Manaun Volcano and Nyos Crater Lakes in Cameroon. The volcanoes are the most active degassing zones of the Earth. However, Earth outgassing affects many areas of the planet and exposes people to gas hazard. In Italy, several gas emissions were found throughout the Apennine chain, which caused some accidents in the Cali Albany, Viano, Mipa di Anzanto, and Mount Amiata, just to give some examples. This presentation concerns the volcanic emissions focusing on the effect of soil CO2 emissions on the people living in the island of Volcano. One approach to address the gas hazard problem is to identify and prohibit access to the most dangerous zones. This can pose an even greater challenge for scientists, risk managers, civil protection agencies, and policy makers due to the economic effects that strong restrictions can have on the resident people. An alternative solution to this problem involves the gas hazard monitoring using automatic suitable devices deployed in the field. Identifying tracers of the gas hazard can help to implement effective solutions to the gas hazard and reconciling people's safety and land use. The system that will be implemented at Volcano for gas hazard warning bases on three pillars. Volcano monitoring. Weather conditions, and. People exposure, that is the vulnerability. Both the potential damage and weather conditions have a marked seasonal variability. While the volcano monitoring allows assessing timely the hazard level. Etna, Stromboli, Volcano, and Solfatara at Flagreen Fields are the most active volcanoes in Italy. Volcano is one of the seven islands of the Aeolian archipelago, that lies in the southeastern portion of the Tyrrhenian Sea. Since the last eruption, the activity of Volcano consists of surface hydrothermal manifestations, such as fumarole emissions on the crater rim, thermal waters, thermal mud pools, and diffuse degassing of CO2. How much? and the origin of CO2 are the critical points for correlating changes of the diffuse degassing with changes in the volcanic activity. With this purpose, the measurement of CO2 flux, CO2 concentration, and carbon isotope composition have been performed on the island. So, let me move on the next point. How can we identify the zone of the island of Vulcano where people are exposed at high risk? Actually, the water vapor emission shown in this picture here does not live up to the effective activity of volcanoes at the crater rim of the La Fossacon. Some questions arise. Besides the crater zone, where are gas emissions on the island of Vulcano? How can they be identified and signed? To give answer to these important questions, we studied the soil gas emission on the settled zone of Vulcano Porto and the air composition in some closed environments. The soil gases were studied using a sampling grid deployed at the base of the volcanic cone. A sampling probe was encased in the soils, and the CO2 concentration has been measured when stability was achieved in the reading of the IR spectrometer. Some technical details of the instrument RIC and IRGA are listed here. 
The CO2 in the soil gases is either from biologic or geologic origin. The various processes, producing CO2, show why soil CO2 ranges from the atmospheric concentration up to some percent. The histogram here shows the exponential decay of the measurements frequency with the increase of the CO2 concentration. Over than 90% of the measurements are below 4% by volume in CO2. Up to a few percent of CO2 in the soil gases are very frequent everywhere at Volcano. The highest CO2 amount, up to 13% by volume, has been measured at Palazzi and Faraglioni, where there are mud pools, thermal groundwater, and deposition of sulfur minerals. The CO2 flux was measured in agreement with the dynamic concentration method. To measure the CO2 flux, we used a stainless steel probe inserted in the soil, up to the depth of 50 centimeters. The probe is open to both the soil gases and the atmosphere. A pumping unit collected the soil gases at a constant flux rate. This unit is connected to the IR spectrometer. In the mixture of soil gases and air, the CO2 concentration is dynamically dependent from the soil gas flux. At constant pumping rate, the CO2 concentration achieves dynamic stability after a few minutes. This is the so-called dynamic concentration which is dependent from the CO2 flux through the empirical equation here. The data of CO2 flux have been processed through a statistical graphical approach proposed by Sinclair, and are shown in the probability plot. The three populations model represents the best data classification, and the statistics of all the CO2 flux subsets are listed here. The average CO2 flux in the anomalous subset is two orders of magnitude greater than the average value of the background. This statistical classification shows that the CO2 flux changes across the investigated area. The CO2 flux in the large part of Volcano is in the range of the soil degas sing featured by a Mediterranean vegetation. But two anomalous degas sing zones were found at Palazzi and Faraglioni. Move on to the new method that improved the investigation of the diffuse to gas sing, the carbon isotope of the soil CO2. The isotopic measurements were performed using a laser based spectrophotometer. I listed the technical details of the Delterra e analyzer, and those of the gases which have been used for calibration and analytical referencing during measurements. The precision of the on site measurement was comparable with the measurements in the laboratory. Throughout the survey, the instrument was transported in the luggage van of SUV vehicle at Volcano. The soil gases were collected from the probe encased in the soils, by a customized pumping system, at was less than 20% in the B group, where the biologic CO2 is still predominant, 
while dominates in the C group. This group includes the subset of samples collected at Palazzi, where soil CO2 shifts from slightly C13 depleted to slightly C13 enriched, because of the fractionation caused by diffusive transport through the soils. By knowing the percentage of volcanic CO2 and the soil CO2 flux where soil degassing consists of a mixing between biogenic and volcanic CO2, we achieve a more accurate estimate of the volcanic CO2 emitted by diffuse degassing. Let me to move on to show you the volcanic CO2 emitted by diffuse degassing since May 2015 at Vulcano. The point-by-point -point approach of CO2 flux and isotope composition allows us to answer the questions how much and from where volcanic CO2 emissions occurred. The histogram shows the amount volcanic CO2 released from either anomalous or not anomalous zones of Volcano. The diffuse degassing of volcanic CO2 is near 30% the CO2 discharged from the crater cone. The CO2 emitted from not anomalous zones is similar to the amount of volcanic CO2 released from Palazzi and Faraglione. At Volcano, significant amount of volcanic CO2 is thus released by diffuse degassing, because of the specific extent of the surface. Move on to the last question. How this approach can improve the diffuse degassing monitoring. Since May 2015 to November 2018, the volcanic CO2 was estimated by combining carbon isotope composition and soil CO2 flux. The histogram shows the small changes of biologic CO2, which reached a relative maximum in March 2016. Most important, the volcanic CO2 for September 2018 was 25% greater than the estimation for May 2015. This high level of deep degas sink persisted until November 2018 at least. The results of the soil CO2 partitioning shown here indicate that an input of volcanic CO2 occurred before September 2018. Despite this volcanic event does not lead to a volcanic unrest, the gas hazard have increased at Volcano. People love Vulcano for its environmental appeal. The Mediterranean climate, vegetation, crystal clear water, and so on. What is sometimes forgotten is that Vulcano is an active volcano, and like all other active volcanoes, is a gas emitter. Volcanic geysers give spectacular surface manifestations, but can pose a hazard when emission delivered gases in closed environments. A field survey was carried out for gas hazard evaluation indoor at Volcano in August 2020. The measurements of CO2 concentration were performed indoor in 10 sites. Some bistros, restaurants, and accommodations were selected in the anomalous degassing zone of Faraglione, because they are sites accessible by resident people throughout the year. The list shows both the symptoms and effects when people exposed to CO2 concentration above a variety of threshold values. The gas hazard depends on the CO2 concentration and the time of exposure. The most evident results of this survey are that the average CO2 concentration in the air was higher than the monthly reference value that was recorded at Mauna Loa Observatory. The measurements shows that the volcanic emissions have an impact on the composition of the air at Faraglione. The CO2 concentration changes in the various site, and changes over a range of two orders of magnitude. The air CO2 exceeded the STEL value, and the TWA value at one site. This site is a private building having the floor below the ground level. The cellar is accessible by stairs. Cellars are sites at high risk for gas hazard, because of CO2 accumulates close to the ground floor and several houses at Volcano use the underground spaces with reduced ventilation. People adopt empirical solutions to test the risk level. Obviously, these solutions are inefficient. The gas hazard is an alarming issue that needs feasible effective solutions. The implementation of an early warning system can help to mitigate the gas hazard. This goal here can be achieved by establishing an early warning system able to evaluate the change of the gas hazard level over time and provide indications on its short-term evolution. 
Thus, we are announcing efforts to improve the current monitoring network of soil CO2 flux using four new stations at Faraglione Zone. This picture shows the current monitoring network in the Faraglione Zone, for continuous monitoring of the CO2 flux and the groundwater. The implementation of the early warning system for gas hazard needs an improvement of the current network, by using four new stations in the same zone. The stations are deployed to measure the soil CO2 flux, the air CO2 concentration and the weather parameters, that is temperature, pressure, and rain, because they affect both the soil gas flux, and the air composition. Multiple weather stations ensures the continuous weather data flow to the observatory. The early warning network bases on four stations fully designed, and developed in the INGV laboratories in Palermo. The automatic device allows multiple measurements. The station includes sensor components, data logging unit for acquisition, recording, data processing, and transmission of the measurements, and the power unit. The sensor listed here are IR sensors, resistors, and so on. The data logger was designed and developed at INGV, for both the hardware and software components. The data logger for geochemical data is based on Atmel SAMD21, 16-bit ARM microprocessor. The data recorded hourly and the log file are sent on the internet to a web. Gasnet has SD card to store lots of data. Various ports allow connecting sensors, and monitoring probes through the RS485 port, enabling a fully customizable data logging. Running four files hosted on the SD and EEPROM memories, enables the station configuration and the scheduling of the measurements. Web server and HGNT software help remote data downloading on request and reschedule of the station. The firmware can recover connection errors, low power supply, changes in the number of the recorded parameters, and various customizable options. During periods of inactivity, the station is switched off and rebooted before the next acquisition. The reliability of the data logger during the acquisition is complemented by the security during the data transmission through encoded passphrase. The data logger records the measurements and send the data, by writing database and tables on the server hosted at the observatory. The GAS NET web interface for station configuration includes, the configuration setup, the station ID with connection parameters and data broadcast, data recording setup, and a submask for calibrating sensors and probes. The submask of the station status interface includes, on-off status, power supply status, clock settings, online test for the sensors on board. The plot NET software allows data visualization, data analysis, and data processing. Plot NET shows time series for dynamic concentration of CO2, and air CO2, allowing the construction of plot panels. This software allows data analysis by calculating maximum and minimum values, range of values, and calculating averages. Each station of the network provides the data normalized against each own range. This allows consistent comparison among the different stations of the network. Climatic conditions can affect the soil CO2 production, and soil respiration. Weather can change the soil CO2 flux on a short time scale. Rapid change in atmospheric pressure modifies the soil to gas sing, because the size of the gas pressure gradient in the soil is in the range of some millibar. This is almost the same size of the changes in the atmospheric pressure, during the transition from good to nasty weather. Weather affects soil respiration, but also the stability of the boundary layer, that is the lithosphere-atmosphere interface, where soil degas sink can pose threats to human activities. Therefore, the monitoring of the weather conditions helps gas hazard management in volcanic zone. The effects of volcanic degassing, the consequent risk assessment, and the broad perspective of the earth of degassing are among the topic of these special issues that will be published in Atmosphere and DPI. I cordially invite you to submit your researches concerning the causes of the current increase of the CO2 in the atmosphere. Atmosphere is a fully open access with more frequent cessation. The median processing time is 
less than 40 days. Also, uh, MDPI will do free English editing after the acceptance of your paper. Everyone can freely access and download the full text of all articles published with MDPI, thus enhancing visibility of your research. Accepted articles are typically published online more rapidly in MDPI journals than those of the traditional subscription-based and printed journal art. The median processing time is less than 40 days in atmosphere. Please go to the link that I leave in the description of this video for further submission information. Let me to move on the conclusion of this video presentation. We are implementing an early warning system for gas hazard in the island of Vulcano based on the three pillars here. First of all, the anomalous degassing zones have to be precisely identified. Thanks to the new technologies for isotopic analysis, the volcanic origin of the soil degassing can be detected in the field. The approach of coupling the measurement of carbon isotope composition with the soil CO2 flux enabled the identification of the anomalous degassing zone at Vulcano. The monitoring of the carbon isotopic composition of soil CO2 was facilitated by the possibility of carrying out the measurements in the field. The modeling of this data helped to quantify the volcanic CO2 accurately. Thus, it is possible to monitor effectively the volcanic degassing by the soil gas surveys. The comparison with previous studies show that the gassing zone have a stable position over time and that the gas hazard depends on the variations in the state of volcanic activity. The monitoring of the social flux is crucial for gas hazard mitigation. We are implementing the early warning system using four new stations of the town. This technological improvement enables lots of data automatic processing and delivering analysis to the civil defense authorities for helping decisions which are based on reliable data. As many as five zones, Vulcano includes a variety of environments. Despite the current advances in technologies allow implementing a reliable monitoring network, the site-specific warning system is not available yet. Therefore, an effective warning system includes training Knowledge and awareness of gas hazard are crucial for gas hazard mitigation. This pillar includes informing people on gas hazard, training in the identification of this natural process, and ability to take proper actions for reducing the risk in everyday activities. Thank you for all your attention.